the presence of a stereocenter within a molecule is a dead giveaway that stereochemistry is relevant to the molecule. In this video, we're going to define what we mean by stereocenter and see examples of some stereocenters in molecules. We're also going to develop a fail-safe method for determining whether a carbon within a molecule is a stereocenter or not. Strictly speaking, a stereocenter is defined as follows. If we run a thought experiment where we exchange the positions of two groups bound to an atom, which we're calling A here, and that results in the generation of a configurationally distinct molecule, a simpler term for this is simply a stereoisomer, then that atom is called a stereocenter. You'll start to notice patterns in the structures of stereocenters as you work with stereochemistry. But I want to emphasize before we look at examples that this is the formal definition and it suggests a fail-safe method for identifying a stereocenter that involves exchanging the positions of two groups and seeing if the molecule generated is a stereoisomer of the original or not. Phrases like four different groups bound to carbon but can be ambiguous to apply kind of in the same vein as the plane of symmetry method in identifying chirality. These descriptors of stereocenters can be a little bit unreliable. Strictly speaking, a stereocenter is defined as we've seen here in the yellow box. Exchanging the positions of two groups at the stereocenter must result in the generation of a stereoisomer. And the nice thing about this as well is it says nothing about the geometry of the atom. It might be tetrahedral or it might be trigonal planar. And strictly speaking, the stereocenter term isn't defined with reference to any particular geometry. As we just mentioned, tetrahedral stereocenters involve four different groups bound to a tetrahedral carbon or a situation where exchanging the positions of two groups at the center leads to a stereoisomer. The simplest case, though, is four different groups bound to tetrahedral carbon. Notice that if we exchange the positions of B and A bound to this central carbon, we end up with the mirror image of the original, and this is non-identical to the original molecule. The two are enantiomers. Because these are stereoisomers, the starred carbon is a stereocenter. The four different groups definition is not entirely rigorous. And here's an example where we have two stereocenters in this molecule, actually, neither of which looks like it has four different groups attached to it. Let's focus on this atom on the right here. This carbon bears a CH3 group, a hydrogen, and two groups that look identical involving CH2, CH2, and the methyl bearing carbon. Spatially speaking, though, one of these groups acts like a right hand and the other group acts like a left hand. As a consequence, they are stereochemically different. And so from that perspective, this is a carbon bearing four different groups. Although we wouldn't know this without kind of a subtle appreciation for how the two carbon chains on either side of the ring are different stereochemically. And so it doesn't really look like an atom bearing four different groups. Of course, to verify rigorously that the starred carbon is actually a stereocenter, all we have to do is exchange the positions of two groups. The CH3 and the H would be easiest here. When we do this, we end up with a stereoisomer of the original molecule. And the most straightforward way to see this is to consider cis-trans isomerism in this cyclohexane ring system. The molecule on the left is trans, while the molecule on the right is the corresponding cis isomer. As a consequence, this starred carbon is a stereocenter, as is the one on the left, and I'll leave that analysis to you, although it's very similar to the analysis that we did here. Trigonal atoms that are part of alkenes or other groups can also serve as stereocenters. If I exchange the positions of the hydrogen and the CH3 at the starred carbon, the resulting molecule is not the same as the one I started with, since the CH3 and the methoxy group go from being in a cis orientation in the original to a trans orientation in the product of exchanging the groups. Because these are stereoisomers then, the starred carbon is a stereocenter. Alkenes aren't the only groups that can engage in stereoisomerism. Amines, which include a carbon-nitrogen double bond, can also engage in stereoisomerism, and the nitrogen can be considered a stereocenter. Exchanging the positions of the lone pair and the CH3 group results in a molecule that is a stereoisomer of the original. Since the two CH3 groups go from being in a cis orientation in the original molecule to a trans orientation in the exchanged molecule. The examples involving tetrahedral stereocenters suggest that when we see wedges and dashes issuing from a tetrahedral carbon, this is often a strong indicator that the carbon is a stereocenter. However, wedges and dashes are often but not always an indicator of a stereocenter. It's good to check whether wedge and dash bearing carbons are stereocenters, 
but they may or may not be. To determine whether an atom is a stereocenter or is not, I strongly advise that you apply this fail-safe process of exchanging two groups and determining whether the generated molecule is the same or not the same as the original. Here's an example of a molecule in which one of the carbons bears a wedge and an implied hydrogen on a dash. Is this carbon a stereocenter? Well, let's exchange the positions of the hydrogen and the CH3 groups and see if the resulting molecule is the same as or different from the molecule that we started with. At first glance, the molecule looks different since the CH3 is now behind the screen and the hydrogen is now in front of the screen, whereas the situation is opposite in the original molecule. But of course, we could simply turn this molecule over, rotating 180 degrees in this direction, and we would arrive at the original structure. These two molecules are equivalent. What we're seeing is just two different views of the same molecule. As a consequence, this carbon bearing the wedges and dashes is not a stereocenter. And for this reason, the wedge on the CH3 is entirely optional. It's often included to emphasize the tetrahedral geometry of this carbon, but that doesn't make the carbon a stereocenter. 